Oak trees like that, like the park itself, are home to hundreds of different species of animals and plants. The older the tree, the greater the range of wildlife living there. And in springtime, the trees are filled with activity. Birds, mammals, insects, and fungi, lichen and spiders can all be found in and around Richmond's great trees. The descendants of King Charles's deer herd are still here centuries later. Today, 600 red and fallow deer roam free in the park. They have a profound impact on the whole of the park's ecology, including the oak trees. The deer reach up to eat the leaves on low-hanging branches of the oaks, giving them the characteristic browse line about six feet above the ground. In early summer, a new generation of young deer arrives. They take their first steps within 20 minutes of being born and will stay in hiding for the first weeks of life. Though they have no natural predators within the park, the mothers see humans, and especially dogs, as a threat to their young. Dogs off leads may attack and even kill young deer, so it's not surprising that their mothers can react very aggressively. Oak and other trees give food to the foraging deer and are also vital to hundreds of other species that depend on them and live amongst them. But the importance of the oaks doesn't stop when the tree dies or branches are dropped. Decaying wood is a fundamental habitat and a source of food for many small animals, especially beetles. The biggest beetle in the park is this wonderful creature, a stag beetle. In fact, the park is one of the most important breeding sites for these magnificent creatures. And the reason for that, at least in part, uh, is the amount of dead wood that's allowed to accumulate on the ground. 